ASMR video, and in this one we are going to be going over some old football cards. Not old, old, but <laughs> fairly old. These are from my childhood, basically. I think mostly from like the mid-2000s, like 2006, 7, but some of them are older than that. This is just the general, uh, general <laughs> age of the cards, I should say. So I have them in order from division, starting with AFC North, East, West, South, North, East, South, West, there we go. And then the NFC, starting with that. I don't have every team, I don't think. These are just, I remember I had a childhood friend where we would kind of trade back and forth for a little bit. Didn't last too long, but we're going to start with my favorite team. All right, before the jokes come in, I understand we've been the laughing stock of sports for like 20 some years. Don't care. We're finally turning it around. That's all I'm going to say. Braylon Edwards. Now, some of these, well, all of these cards have information, like these stats on the back. But these specific, um, let's see what they are. They are Topps cards from uh, 2006. They look like this. They have like the shiny look to them, but they have some information on the back as well as like these little fun facts. So, in 1962, the Browns drafted future NBA star John Albacek. I actually did not know that, so that's very interesting. They have the stats and stuff too, but I'm not going to go over all of that because I do have a good bit of cards and I don't want this video to be like three hours long. So, next up, Kellen Winslow. Um, I'm not, I was a fan of him as a player, but um, I'm not going to get into too much detail. If you're interested, you can just Google Kellen Winslow Jr. I can't support this man anymore. He's probably going to die in prison for his actions, and deservedly so. But this information, prior to using flags in 1948, officials blew a horn to signal a foul. I didn't know that either. Now, these both of these cards, these are the only Browns cards that I do have, and they're both from like this 2006 Topps pack. So, next up... My most hated team. I cannot stand them at all. Specifically this man. <laughs> Hopefully there's no Steelers fans in the comments. If so, I'm sorry. We got Big Ben Roethlisberger. Now this card specifically is from the J January 15th, 2006 Divisional Playoff Weekend where the Steelers beat the Colts 21-18. to And it lists some of his stats from the game. He went 14-24 of for 197 yards and touchdowns. On the back, they even show, like, the whole box score from the entire game, so I think that's pretty cool. Next up, this is easily my worst condition card, but I think it is my oldest. We got the bus, Jerome Bettis. It's kind of one of these holographic. It is from 1999, so this is a fairly old card. It's about 22 years at this point. This just lists some of his stats from 97 and 98, where three times in each season, he led, uh, or no, 98, he had the most rushing yards, and then 97, he had it as well. In 98, he had games of 139, 138, and 131 yards, and then in 97, he had games of 164, 142, and 137, so not a good condition card, but it does look pretty cool, as much as I hate that team. Next up, we have my second most hated team, the team that quite literally would not exist if it was not for my Cleveland Browns, the Baltimore Ravens. And I only have one of them, this Ray Lewis card. This is the only card, it's a Bowman, it's the only card like this that I have, I believe. Another one from 1999, so that is why it looks like this. Doesn't have a whole lot on here because he had not been playing for, for a bunch, I think just two years at this point, so yeah, nothing back there, just a bunch of stats. Next up, we have the Cincinnati Bengals, and this is going to round off the AFC North. We got Chad Johnson before he changed his name to Chad Ochocinco, and I think he changed it back to Chad Johnson at some point. So, through 2004, coin toss winners were 198, 163, and 16 in overtime games. So that's interesting. He definitely got a good shot at winning. List some of his stats. This is where Chad Johnson really started to take off because the year before he had 97 catches for 100, 
1,432 yards and nine touchdowns. So this is where it really started to kick off. Procho Cinco, one of the best pure route runners the game has ever seen. Whatever your opinion is of him, his antics, his showmanship, the route running can hardly be matched. Next up, we have the AFC East, starting off with the Miami Dolphins. I have a couple of these cards. I think uh, they are the killer bees. They are from 2005, so they're not as old, even though they do look old. First one here is linebacker Bob Brzezinski. Let's see if we have information here. Miami Dolphins team record, most kickoff return yards. Oh, this is just a fun fact about Mercury Morris. So, a total of 14 and a half sacks up until this point. Nothing crazy with the stats. Uh, this was from, I'm guessing, the 80s. Yes, 80s. Next up, we have Glenn Blackwood, a safety who played again in the 80s. This card list from 79 to 87. Glenn is Miami's number three interceptor of all time with 29. Let's see if there's a fact back here. Bob led the 1983 Miami Dolphins in tackles. I, I think I have the most Dolphins cards, ironically, for some reason. Um, they are my mom's favorite team, so I get, although I am kind of, I've converted her to a Browns fan over the years. So next up, we have the great legendary Larry Zonka. I believe he is one of the few living members of that undefeated 72, yeah, it was 72 season um, that still pops champagne every single year. <laughs> I think I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Larry Zonka is still kicking it. So, he was a running back, obviously. Let's see if there's information. Larry's hobby is playing the harmonica. It's actually very interesting. <laughs> you don't see many people who play the harmonica. This, again, was from 2005. Next up, we have my mom's favorite player of all time. She had a huge crush on him, Jason Taylor, who was a beast in his own right. And a fun fact, if you did not know, is the brother of Joy Taylor, who you see on TV if you watch ESPN and such, or Fox Sports, whatever she's on, I don't know. Colin Coward, I don't like him. Um, so Jason Taylor from Akron. This is a 2004 card. Up until this point, just five years into his career, or no, sorry, seven years, he had 71 sacks, 18 and a half in 2002. So, very underrated defensive end. I don't feel like his name comes up enough as it should. Then we have two copies of Chris Chambers for some reason. This one is also like the others. Well, this card is a little bit different. So, Chris Chambers, we just have some stats. No detailed information on the back there. Try to get these organized. This Chris Chambers looks a little bit different. Chambers topped the Dolphins in receptions with 52 and receiving yardage with 734 last season. He also set a single game highs with seven catches for 138 yards versus Oakland. So at this point, he had been playing in the league for two years, and he is from Cleveland, Ohio. 2003 card. Next up, I have a good bit of these, like, 1995 playoff cards, but they are actually from... Oh, they are from 95. I thought they were a little bit... Oh, wow, so these are actually in very, very good condition for being 1995. So first up, we have Mark Ingram. Not that Mark Ingram. This is the wide receiver. Oh, you know what? This is Green Bay. Oh, acquired from Miami in an off-season trade. Ingram looks forward to making his mark by contributing. Okay, so I have him with the Dolphins because this is the jersey, and his last stats say he was with the Dolphins, but I guess he got traded to the Packers when this card came out, so I should adjust him. So that is it for the Dolphins. Next up, we have the Buffalo Bills with Andre Reed. Andre Reed was a giant target in the Bills' offensive scheme during the 1994. Earned his seventh, str seventh straight Pro Bowl berth. A little tongue twister. Willis McGahey. Now this is more of a fairly recent uh, card. Yeah, 2005. Now this one is very cool because it, I think, came from 
a bazooka pack of gum, maybe, or maybe bazooka just partnered with Tops or something, I don't know, but it's like a little comic book on the back. Bazooka Blast stat of the year, Willis's best, Willis bested 100 yards in his first three NFL starts, something only Stump, Mitchell, and Chris Brown had done since 1970. Fun fact, if I'm not mistaken, Stump Mitchell is the current Cleveland Browns running back coach, so it's a good coach to have. McGahee's installation as the feature back improved the Bills, mirrored the Bills' improvement in 04 as the team went 9-2 and in his starts after opening 1-5. In his 11 starts, he reached 100 yards seven times, finishing with a team record tying 13 touchdowns for first-year backs. Very good stats for Willis McGahee. Next up, we have the AFC. That would be South, I believe. Yes, with the... Oh, no. He's in the Panthers, but it's still a Buffalo Bills. <laughs> Got confused. This is a running back, Richard Huntley. Played for Carolina in 01 and led the Panthers in rushing yards, so he, too, was just recently traded, but I had noticed that. I'm going to try to speed it up just a little bit with these videos. We are on to the Patriots, so we are still in. Okay, so my recording stopped, and I'm not sure where it left off, so I don't want to go back through, but we had Patriots, Stanley Morgan, Richard Huntley for the Bills, Willis McGahee for the Bills, Andre Reid for the Bills. I, I'm assuming I had gone through this already, but I should have been paying closer attention <laughs> when my camera stopped. That is my fault, and I apologize. Next up for the Patriots, we have Ben Coates. So these 1995 playoff cards aren't anything special in the back. They just kind of list stats. So Ben is like a thick, furry coat. He gives the quarterback a warm, comfortable feeling when he goes for the ball. That's a very strange description <laughs> for a tight end. Then we have a rookie card for, is this Marquise Hill? Yes, Marquise Hill. Looks actually kind of cool in the back. I like the way that design is. Tremendous size for a defensive end. It has New England Patriots. I'm not sure what the 03304, what all this is. It's got an under smoke blitz play at the top. He is 6'6, 297. That is huge. Having played in a similar system at LSU, he may find it relatively easy to slide into their system. So we got a rookie guard. Then we have the New York Jets with Johnny Johnson. Running back for the New York Jets. Not a lot of information on the back. Boomer Esiason. Boomer. Quarterback for the New York Jets. His 1994 passing yards total was hardly the norm. Boomer wants to increase his, his productivity and lead the Jets into the AFC playoffs. So he had 2,782 yards for 17 touchdowns and 13 picks. Not that great of a season. So, my recording stopped once more. I think I might be running out of camera space, so gotta pick this up. There's no way I am, though. Like, yeah, I thought I was about to stop again. <laughs> I'm constantly trying to watch it. So, next up, we got Big Blue Earl Campbell. This is a very cool card with the Love You Blue at the top from the Houston Oilers. This card is from 2005. Drafted first overall in 1978, Earl was the NFL MVP, Rookie of the Year, and rushing champ that season. He repeated MVP in 79 as well. What an absolute beast if you want to take a look at the stats on the back of that card. Earl Campbell, NFL legend, absolute beast. Earl's nickname was the Tyler Rose. Next up, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars with trying to find a position defensive end, Tony Brackens. He was a monster for Jacksonville. He recovered over 25% of their sacks. That is a large portion of one team sacks. Cedric Tillman up next for the Jags. Still, again, I'm going to try to speed this up a tad bit. The legendary Uncle Shea, Shannon Sharp. This is a Denver Broncos. Shannon Sharp, I believe. Yes, it is. One of the best tight ends in the AFC. Try in the NFL. Shannon hopes to lead the Broncos back into playoff hunt while building his career off of the 94 season. So at this point, I think it had been a league for like three years, I believe. Three or four. And then we have Glenn Milburn running back for Denver. 
Shannon Sharp at this time. Definitely not their lead back. It was not Terrell Davis. <laughs> um, next up, we have the Oakland Raiders, and we have Greg Townsend, a defensive end, former New York Jets player. Oh, this is just information, like a little story about some guy named Mark Gastineau and about Greg Townsend. It's a little long, though, so I'm not going to go over it. Oh, you know what? This is not the Oakland Raiders, because at this point in time, they were the Los Angeles Raiders. This card is from 1992, so this is actually my oldest card. It doesn't look like it's that old, though. That's how little I've actually handled these things, apparently. Then we have Stan Humphreys for the San Diego Chargers. Drilled a pair of 43-yard touchdown passes in the second half of a 94 AFC Championship game at Pittsburgh to lead them to the Super Bowl. On the year, he had 17 touchdowns and 12 picks. Not that great. Lake Dawson, that's a very cool name, wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs. The claim that Lake is an emerging star holds water. Wow. <laughs> Whoever takes over as the Chiefs quarterback will find a talented target in Speedy Dawson. Then we have a rookie card for the Chicago Bears. This is also one of these very cool bazooka uh, stat cards here. This is I Aries Curry. I might have messed up that name. Aries. I said rookie card, right? Yeah. So Aries was at his best versus North Carolina teams, averaging 7.3 grabs for 111.7 yards. Curry, also a top track performer, topped the 2004 ACC with 61 receptions and 868 yards. First Clemson player to lead the conference in both categories, as well as earn first-team All-ACC honors since Perry Turtle in 1980. Then we have Sexy Rexy or Rex Grossman. <laughs> Man, I remember when Rex was all the buzz for whatever reason. <laughs> so in his NFL career up to this point, he had not really played. He was not played. He was not a starter. In three years, he had four touchdowns and six picks. So this was not where he got to start yet. But it says small college slash big star running back Walter Payton, Jackson State. I'm not sure what that is about. It almost seems like a typo. Then we have this card here. It's a little different than the rest. Bernard Berrien, 13 catches for 246 in 2005. So not the greatest stats. Third round draft pick from Fresno State. Then we have the legendary Warren Moon with this 95 playoff card. Minnesota's quarterback, the sky is the limit for Moon. They are very clever with these word plays. The lake and the water, the sky and the moon. I like it. 94 season, he became the first Vikings quarterback to pass for 4,000 plus yards. In 1995, he wants to reach his first career Super Bowl. That year, he had 18 touchdowns, 19 interceptions, which isn't the best. But he had 4,264 yards, which is pretty great. Um, he also got to take in the dual threat aspect that came with Warren. Then we have Edgar Bennett from the Green Bay Packers, who was a running back. He forced to switch to a single back offense, so I guess he's used to that dual back. Maybe a little T formation, who knows. Big Blue Wrecking Crew, a very cool New York Giants card here for George Martin. Defensive end, this card is from 2005. It just looks a little older. So he played from 75 until 88 and totaled 46 career sacks. But you got to keep in mind, they didn't start tracking sacks until 1982, I believe. So for a good part, like half of his career, sacks weren't a thing, so more than likely he's in like the 70 range, but 46 official stats. Then we have Thomas Lu I could be wrong on that information. I'm just going by. I know stats weren't tracked back in the day, but his first stat was calculated in 1982, so that's the information I'm going off of. Then we have Thomas Lewis, another one of these 85 playoff cards. Wide receiver for the New York Giants. Only had four receptions that year. But he did 4-4 uh, four, four speed, and he was a punt and kick return specialist. So that is where he shines the most. Then we have this pretty cool Philadelphia Eagles card with an amazing... 
American flag at the top of tight end Keith Jackson. When the Eagles drafted Keith Jackson in the first round, they essentially plucked a diamond out of the rough, used to primarily as a block and tight end in Oklahoma's wishbone offense. He proved to be among the most reliable receivers and football. So up to this point, he had played for four years in total 2,756 yards, as well as 20 touchdowns, averaging almost 12 yards a catch, which is pretty great for a tight end. And we have this interesting Eagles card. I think it's a rookie. It's got to be. Of Michael Lewis, safety from Colorado. Then we have one of... Well, I was going to say one of the greatest fullbacks of all time, but that also depends on if you include a guy like Jim Brown as a fullback or Marion Mott. No, Marion was running back, I believe, so still one of the greatest, definitely the greatest modern times fullback, I'd say. Allstott gave the Bucks all of the scoring they would need in their week six meeting with the Browns, of course, of course. <laughs> The powerful back rambled for a season high 126 yards on 17 carries and scored two touchdowns as Tampa Bay seized a 17 to 3 win. He scored runs on one and seven. He was six foot one, 248 pounds. What a beast! This card is from 03, so I think that's the only one like that that I have. Then we have a Frank Reich of the Carolina Panthers, but he is listed. He was just traded. He played for Buffalo before, and now he is with Carolina. That's why it's his practice squad jersey. <laughs> Outstanding substitute quarterback in Buffalo. Frank is looking forward to leading his own offense as a proud member of the expansion Panthers. So this was actually the Panthers' very first season. That's actually pretty interesting. Then we have Greg, sorry, Greg Howard, a running back for Atlanta. Will Ironhead. That's a great nickname. Ironhead Craig Hayward continues to steal the Falcons' rushing game. Craig made a name for himself with a career season of 94 and hopes for an encore in 95. So he ran the ball for 779 yards, averaged 4.3 yards a carry with seven touchdowns, but he also got 32 passes for 335 yards for an average of 10.5 a reception, so as well as a touchdown. Dual threat running back there. Then we have this Seattle Seahawks card, going back to these classic tops cards that we started with of the great Sean Alexander. The only team to improve by 10 wins was the 1999 Colts to 13-3. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that was Peyton Manning's doing. I could be wrong, but it seems the time frame would line up correctly. Although he was a little bit before 99, no. Or maybe I forget. Sean Alexander, the last season, he had 1,880 yards and 27 touchdowns. That is just insane. Conference leader in italics. Okay, so this is just giving a bunch of like stats in which he led in. Sean's ground-gaining dominance earned him the 2005 MVP, as well as the rushing title with the ninth highest yardage total in league history. Very, very great running back. Then we have Matt Hasselbeck. A little bit of a different background there. Or a different card. This is another 2003. Hasselbeck resembled an auto mechanic in 2002. <laughs> Using his right arm to fine-tune the Seahawks aerial attack, he set a franchise record with two 400-yard games, threw a career-high 15 touchdown passes, and led Seattle to victories in their final three contest. So last season he had 3,075 yards, 15 touchdowns, 10 picks. Just getting his career started. Hadn't made it to the Super Bowl quite yet, I don't think. That is it for the NFL cards. For some reason, I have a random Jonathan Wells Ohio State card in here. I, I don't know why, but we'll go over it anyway. Ohio State University. He totaled a career of 2,381 yards, averaged 5 yards a carry with 26 touchdowns, as well as 26 reception, receptions and 233 yards. Jonathan led the Buckeyes in rushing and scoring and earned the team MVP honors for 01. He became the 16th back in school history to top the 1,000-yard mark and finished the school's 16th highest career rusher. So that is 
is it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like, hit subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video.